much indeed solid ground for bringing solid messages in song tonight. No other reason but me, sinner friend. There was no other reason why Christ died. The reason was for you and the reason was for me. He died on Calvary's tree. To bring this evening to a close, I want to preach tonight, and I have been urged to preach, and I've struggled all week with this message. And it's got to be one of the saddest stories ever told in Holy Scripture. It's a story tonight, a sad story that certainly doesn't it doesn't have a happy ending. And I'll tell you what makes it sad tonight. Many people have lived. Many people have died. And many people have perished. Just like the man. God is going to bring before us this evening. He's a man who partied and perished on the one night. His story is only told in one chapter of the Bible. Even though he perished, this man perished, and it wasn't because he knew nothing of God. He was a man who perished, knowing all about God. He certainly wasn't a heathen. He was a man who was evangelized. He was a man who knew all he needed to know. But he still perished. And he still went to a lost sinner's hell. It's a sad story, that. What I want to say is this this evening. There's people who perished and went to hell with the gospel coming out of their ears. There's people who has gone to hell with John 3.16 on their lips. There's people who has gone to hell and they could have preached the gospel is better than me. And they went to hell and it wasn't because they didn't know. This man knew. This man was without excuse. And this man needn't have had to perish, but he did. Even though he knew what he had to do. I'll tell you where you'll find this man tonight. You'll find him in the book of Daniel. And you'll find him in chapter 5, and I'm only going to read the text tonight. The text is enough to tell his story. And we're in Daniel chapter 5 tonight, and you'll find my text at verse number 22. His name, of course, is Belshazzar. You know the story about Belshazzar, don't you? A man tonight who threw a great party. The drink was flying, everything was flying, until God 
brought the proceedings to a standstill. Do you know Belshazzar had a great privilege? And the great privilege was this. God didn't act in sudden judgment. As we'll find out tonight, God terrified him. God moved in mercy before he moved in judgment. I'll tell you this, sinner friend, how many times has God moved in mercy towards you? But here's the sad message tonight. that tells Belshazzar's story, a story like many a person's story. Daniel chapter 5, verse 22. Daniel speaks to Belshazzar, and this is what he says. O thou his son, O Belshazzar, Has not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, has not humbled thine heart. Though thou knewest all this. A sad story of a man who knew everything, but still perished. You know, friends, tonight there's people in the kingdom of morn who knows all they need to know to be saved, who knows all they need to know about coming to Christ, who knows all about all they need to know of how to be in heaven. And yet, friends, tonight, they're still perishing. They knowest all this. Four men in Holy Scripture tonight were like Belshazzar. Do you remember in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, you find a man there called Agrippa. When Paul preached the gospel to Agrippa that day, this is what Agrippa said. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. How many people could you write over their lifeless bodies tonight Agrippa, people who lived and people who died like Agrippa, almost persuaded, but lost. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24, you'll find another man. You call him Felix. And you'll remember in that story where you'll find where Fe Paul preached to Felix and he preached on righteousness and temperance and judgment to come and it says that Felix trembled. It's a good thing to tremble, friends. Ah, but friends, it's not enough to tremble. Felix trembled. But he still perished. Agrippa almost persuaded, but lost. Felix trembled, but lost. 
What about Pontius Pilate? He was a man, the wife came along and said to him, Listen, have thou nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. And it says in the Gospels tonight that Pilate sought to release Jesus, knowing who he was. And the man who cried, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? History tells us soon afterwards died a suicide's death. Agrippa, almost persuaded, but lost. Felix trembled, but lost. Pontius Pilate, looking into the face of Christ, but, but lost. What about the rich young ruler tonight? A young man who fell at the feet of Christ and cried with his heart, What must I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Christ spoke to him. Christ told him. And that young man turned to his heels and walked the other way. A young man tonight who knelt at the feet of Christ but perished. And a man who listened to Christ but perished. We come to Belshazzar tonight. Oh, thou his son O Belshazzar, thou hast not humbled thine heart, even thou knewest all this. I want you to notice, first of all, that that text brings out a person. O Belshazzar, you remember tonight that there's a great crowd in this hall. Thousand lords. But this text brings us to a person out of the number. O Belshazzar. Do you know who O Belshazzar was? Belshazzar was a man who lived for the here and now. He was a man who had no time for God. He was a man who had no thought for eternity. He was a man tonight who had even no concern for his soul. A man who lived for the here and now. You, that person tonight, you're living for the here and now. You've no thought for God. You've no concern for your soul. You've no thought of eternity. You see, friend, here was one man tonight who partied as if as if life was never going to end. Little did he know that the party would end with eternity. I want you to notice the banquet because here was a man this evening who thought he was living life to the full, who thought he had life the way he wanted life, you see, people have this mentality, well, I'm here for a short time, but I'm here for a good time. If there's anything I could say about Belshazzar tonight, here was a man tonight who wasted his life. 
Here was a man this evening who proved tonight that there's pleasure in sin. I'll tell you something about Belshazzar tonight. He's a man tonight who proves to us how far sin will take you. The crowd was there. All oh, the drink was there. The laughter was there. You know, friend, tonight, God was there. You know, friend, God was watching while all that's going on tonight. You know, friend, God is watching you this evening. God knows the life that you're living. God's watching your life. And you know, not only was there the banquet, but I want you to notice his blasphemy. Because when the wine was flowing, he blasphemed God. Do you know how he blasphemed God? He commanded for all the golden vessels to be taken out of the, out of the store and bring them out. All the vessels that was brought from the temple of God out of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar, his grandfather. And he poured the wine into them and he started to drink from them. And by doing so, he was blaspheming God. Do you know, friend, tonight you don't need to be a wino to blaspheme God? There's people who have been to church this morning and have blasphemed God. There's people who go up for communion and the blaspheme God. There's unsaved people, and I'm saying this on the grounds of Holy Scripture. I wouldn't say it outside it. Who flocked up to the communion rail, and by doing so they were eating and drinking damnation to themselves. There's more blasphemy that goes on in churches that people don't realize. And friend, God watches every move. Do you know tonight? God watches every move in your life. And God knows every sin. But will you watch the story? Not only is there his banquet and his blasphemy, but has there is his bewilderment because God moves in. And in verse number five, we read, In the same hour came forth the fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote, and the king's countenance was chained. I can tell you something now. The finger of God can soon appear in your life. God can soon write in your life. How many people I know who had no time for God, no thought for God, until one day they discovered a wee lump. And God wrote with his finger. And God can write with his finger in many ways, friends to sober us up, to bring us to our senses. God writes us with his finger, I can tell you in many ways. God can write with his finger in a tragedy. God can write with his finger in death. God didn't have to write with his finger here. But he didn't mercy. 
Do you know what God said to Belshazzar through that writing? His days were numbered. Thy kingdom has been numbered. Listen on, see a friend, your days are numbered. And with the writing he wrote these words, thou art wet in the balances are fine wanting. You're not prepared. The person. Here's the problem. O Belshazzar, thou hast not humbled thine heart. I want you to tell you something tonight. There's a wee verse of Scripture that I could write upon the coffin lid of every dead, unsaved person. Do you know what wee verse I could write upon the coffin lid of every dead, unsaved person? It'd have to be Obadiah chapter 1, verse 3. Do you know what Obadiah chapter 1, verse 3 says? The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. I could write that text upon the gravestone of every unsafe person. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Man's pride won't admit that he's a sinner. Man's pride won't admit that he needs Christ. And the pride of man's heart deceives him. This was Belshazzar's problem. And this is the problem of every sinner. Thou wilt not humble thine heart tonight to believe. The person, the problem, I'm finishing. The privilege. Though Thou knewest all this. Unsaved friend tonight, are you still rebelling against God tonight? Though thou knowest that he died for thee, are you willing tonight to reject Christ? Though thou knowest that he suffered for thee, bled for thee, died for thee, You willing to walk out of this tabernacle this evening and say, sorry, not for me? Even though thou knowest all this. Unsafe friend to me. Is this man's story your story to me? As I have said at the beginning to me, you can go to hell with the gospel coming out of your ears, even though thou knowest all this. Belshazzar knew all that he needed to know, but he refused and he rebelled. And we read these words in verse 30. And that night was Belshazzar the king slain. The party that ended with eternity. And I can tell you, as they carried him out to bury him, O oh, Belshazzar, I could almost hear the cry, O oh, Belshazzar, thou hast not humbled thine heart, even though thou knewest this. How many person has been carried to the grave? brought up, cuddled, cradled in the gospel, but lost tonight. Maybe there's somebody here tonight, and you sat on a granny's knee, and she told you all she needed to know. 
maybe a mother, maybe a father. But tonight you will not humble your heart even though you know everything that is needed to know. There's a wee verse, and it's in our closing hymn tonight. O sinner, God's patience may weary some day, and leave thy sad soul in the blast. By willful resistance, you've drifted away over the dead line tonight. O Belshazzar, O Belshazzar, Thou hast not humbled thine heart, even though thou knewest all this. Don't you make a fool's choice tonight. Come to Christ, who died to save you on the cross at Calvary. Let's pray. Lord, tonight we thank Thee for the cross. We thank Thee, Lord, for dying for us. Thank Thee, Lord, it was for me. What we have heard this evening, Lord, may it frighten us. May it convict. And may it bring, Lord, tonight sinners to repentance. And may there never be a Belshazzar or not a Belshazzar in this meeting this evening. God save, we pray. Give deciding grace for Christ's sake. Amen. 230 in the red hymn book, O sinner.